Welcome to Tamara Tattletales. I'm Tamara and I spill the tea on your favorite reality stars. All right, so let's get to it. So first and foremost, I did, oh, y'all had me like doing homework on top of homework. So, so I gave a little shout out to everybody that wanted me to do shout outs. First things first, I wanna knock out rumors. Now, I can't talk a lot about the show because I'm still under contract. Um, we're all still under contract. It's kind of like a lifetime contract. So there's a few rumors about myself. I don't know about anybody else because I don't really, I don't care. I don't really get into that. And if it comes my way, I tell people to leave me out of it. It has nothing to do with me. So rumors, not just about myself, but about the show itself. So first and foremost, Mass. It is 100% real. It's zero acting. I'm not an actor. I've never acted in my life. So I don't even know how to act. It is 100% real. The only thing is obviously is the editing, but everything that people say, everything that people do, that is what you see. They might sway it a little bit because they might chop them off at a sentence or something or a, or a word, but it is 100% real. There's no acting. The producers don't give us guidance to say anything. Um, they might give us a topic to talk about, but we come up with the questions. We do everything. So this stuff about they make us say they don't make us do anything we don't want to. That was one of the very first um, meetings I had with one of the executive producers that you are you can you don't have to do anything you don't feel comfortable doing or saying. So it is 100 percent real. No acting. All right. So let's do that myth away for people that think that we just out here just acting. Um, another rumor I heard, dang it, what's the rumor I wanted to hear about? Oh, me getting back with Mirla. Mm, mm -mm. That's the rumor I wanted to talk about. So me mending my marriage. No, absolutely not. I am not, um, I have not spoken to Mirla since the reunion. I haven't seen her. I haven't text, nothing. No communication, zero communication. Don't plan on to, um, that's in the past. Um, it is what it is. I'm moving on. She's moving on. All is good, but I am not trying to mend my marriage that was going around. So that is not true. I'm gonna have to debunk that. That's from the horse's mouth. So, all right. Other rumors, other rumors that I heard of. Um, I think that's it because like I said, I don't really do rumors. And if it's any, any rumors that have to do with myself, I, I like to nip it in the bud real quick. All right. So Next thing, first, next thing I want to talk about was therapy. A lot of people ask me about therapy. So funny thing is, um, <laughs> I never even cared for therapy. The only reason I started with therapy was because of the marriage. Like the, the, the way I started going to therapy is because we decided after she broke up with me, we decided, hey, let's see if we can salvage this. So let's go to couples therapy. So we went, um, it, it went how it went. It wasn't, I mean, we didn't come out like, yay, but so we decided, you know what, we'll go separately. So I went separately. I did about four or five sessions. Wasn't in the right headspace. Didn't give it any chance. And I just told the therapist, you know what, I'm out. I don't want to do this. I'm done with this. So then a month later, I thought about it and I was like, you know, if I'm going to do anything, I need to at least give it a, a chance, give it a try. And so I hit her back and I'm like, hey, um, let's do it the right way. Um, I want to set up a session. And so from then on, I'm in love with therapy. So I will highly recommend recommend therapy. Um, we all have traumas, good or bad. If you're in a great place in your life, therapy is good. It's just going to maintain you. It's going to keep you stable and maintain you and help you maintain that. Um, if you're in a bad place in your life, it's going to help you kind of organize your thoughts because you know we over, everybody overthinks especially when we're stressing out and things of that nature so therapy is is a great tool um obviously it's gonna take a while i mean it might take a while for you to find the right person it's just like i mean y'all ladies y'all get your hair done y'all get your eyelashes done y'all won't let anybody do it right so it's the same thing fellas y'all go to the same barber for years so it's the same thing y'all don't just go to anybody so it might take you a while to find that one person that really speaks to you and really understands you. But I am a huge advocate for therapy. I freaking love it. I think I'm gonna do it for the rest of my life. I go every two or three weeks now, but I'm pretty sure I'll, I'll scale it back next year to like once a month or something like that. But like I said, whether you're in a good place or in a bad place, therapy is 100% worth it. So um, you can't go wrong with it. It's only just to make things better. So definitely look into that. Um, 
And I'm and I know in a lot of places take insurance. So if you got insurance through your job, why not? Let's do it. All right, uh, family. That's the next thing I'm gonna talk about before I get into um, all these questions. So uh, a couple questions I had about, um, especially my mom. My mom. Everybody's saying how my mom's doing. She's great. I talk to her often during the week. I just talked to her today. See how she was doing. Everything is good. She's hustling over there and relaxing. Um, how did she take the news um, about the breakup? And how did she feel? So how did she feel about Marilyn? So my mom is a Christian to the T. So my mom loves everybody, everybody. So she loved Marilyn and she will love anybody that I present her. She loves strangers. So she, she's a hundred percent Christian and always is um, and very inviting. And if y'all know any Colombian people, y'all know Colombian people treat y'all like family. So she's typical. How did she feel about what happened? Well, in the typical my mother way, she basically said she was sorry for me, right? But she she always ah, she comes with these these little cliches that just gets under my skin sometimes. And she's just like, um, she verbatim she said, "Pues Dios sabe lo que hace," and that basically means God knows what he God knows what he does. So she gave me one of them Christian answers that I wasn't trying to hear when I told her that. And I was like, Ugh, I just rolled my eyes like, ah, here we go. But like I said, my mom is 100 percent positive. She's always positive. She's like, hey, look, if it happened, it happened for a reason. Um, everything's in God's timing. You know, his timing is never wrong. So you got to have faith and trust it. And obviously, when you're going through something like that, you're not trying to hear that. Cause I'm not going to be like, oh, yeah, you know what? You're right, man. Everything's good. No. Nah. Screw that. So I was like, I kind of like brushed it off and I was like, all right, mom, thank you. Uh, all right, bye. But um, that's how she took, that's how she responded to it. She was sad, obviously, because she wants her baby to be married and happy, but she understands that life happens and things happen and she always just tries to put a good spin on it. So that's that. Um, uh, what else, what else? Uh, oh, I had a good question about that. So what traits... What traits from my mom would I want to see in my future wife? Man, that's an awesome question. So, um, positivity, 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 the positivity that my mom um, shows throughout any situation. I would love to see that um, in my wife, my future wife, and also um, just her heart, like the way she just gives, the way she did, that she loves. She's she she loves unconditionally. So, I would love to see that for my future wife. All right, all right, now that we're done with all that stuff, let's get to the fun stuff. All these other questions you guys asked me. Um, all right, done with that page. This is page one. This is page one. All right, would I do maps again? That's a big no, big no, I would not do maps again. Um, quick answer, I just don't know people's intentions. When I never watched maps before, um, never heard of the show. Didn't even I didn't watch one episode of my season. Um, and so I didn't think I thought, you know, you go into a show where you're going to get married. I thought people would be a little more, you know, truthful, a little more kind of like wanting it. And so therefore, that's why I decided I wouldn't do it again, because I know what I want. I know I came into this make was going to make it work no matter what. Other than it being toxic, I was going to make it work no matter what. And so I understand that a lot of people don't think that way. So that's why I wouldn't do it. Online dating. Yes. Who hasn't? Man, I've done it all. I've done Bumble. I've done Tinder. I've done Hinge. I've done plenty of fish. I've done them all. Um, what I think about them? Eh, it's whatever. I feel like, honestly, it kind of... So, funny thing is, like like everybody, we get swiped left, we get swiped right. I've been curved tons of time on it. So, I, But I feel like that don't doesn't really tell you who tells people who they are like obviously it's like a catalog it's like you just skimming through a catalog or like when you go shopping and you look through a rack of clothes and it's just like whatever uh oh, next one next one but you might be missing out on a gym and that's what online dating is like to me obviously i, I wouldn't ever do online dating again my personal thought i'm not saying i know people that's been married off of it i'm not knocking it i'm saying me personally i can't i can't do it um but not knocking it uh i just i've done it i've had some dates Fun fact, I've never had a bad date in my life, ever. Even if it didn't work out, that date was great. I 
you can ask any girl I've ever been on a date with. I, they will vouch for it. I've never had a bad date in my life. But that doesn't mean there's a second date. And that doesn't mean that we continue to see each other. It's just that time, that moment in time that we spent together was fun, was good. We probably didn't connect. It is what it is. But I made sure she enjoyed her time and I made sure I enjoyed my time. So that's a fun fact about me, my dating. Um, favorite meal. What do I love to cook and top places to visit? So my favorite meal, I'm biased, Colombian food. That's hands down. I love Colombian food. <sighs> this might throw a lot of people off because my favorite Colombian dish is lengua. Lengua translates to tongue, cow tongue. Yes. I know I'm about to get a lot of, a lot of people hating on me because of that, but it's freaking delicious. I love cow tongue. That's my favorite dish, Colombian dish. Um, it's sauteed. It's so good. I don't know how to make it because it just takes too long and I, I just, it just takes too long. I'm a little lazy to, to make it. Um, my favorite, but outside of Colombian food, sushi. That's number two. So we got Colombian, sushi, pizza, Mexican, Italian, and Chinese. That's my top six. That's what I love. Oh, steak somewhere in there too. I love me a good steak, but that's somewhere in there. Um, what was the other one? Uh, what do I love cooking? Seafood. It's not, it's not just because it's easy, but it's delicious. I love seafood. I love shrimp. I love uh, fish. I love crabs. I love, I love it all. I love seafood. Um, not all. I don't, I'm not a big fan of oysters. I'll be, I mean, I'll eat it, but hmm, whatever. It is what it is. It's not like a, it's not my go-to for sure. And top places to visit. So in the States, I haven't visited everywhere. I still want to go to a lot of places, but so far from the places I've been, uh, New York, for sure. New York is amazing. It's, it's, it's very scenic. It's dirty as shit. And I'm not hating on my New York, but y'all know y'all city dirty as hell, but, um, it's very scenic. Um, I, it's, I mean, the, the, I mean, the, the freak, y'all got the best rooftops in the country. Hands down. I've been to a couple of cities. Nobody beats New York with the rooftops. Those, those things are amazing. So New York is a, is a cool spot. Um, I actually like LA. LA is, is real pretty. LA is a lot prettier than I thought it would be. Like I said, I haven't been to a lot of places. Miami is top two for sure. I freaking love Miami. Um, I've been in Miami countless of times. Um, I love the vibe down there. It's a lot of, I mean, a lot of fake people, but ah, it's, there's still some real people in there. The true, the true people that's actually from Miami. The tourists is kind of like what kills it. Like in any city, right? People, the transplants. But uh, I, I haven't gone to Chicago. I, like I said, I haven't gone to Vegas. I, those are places I definitely plan on going to. Um, San Diego's up next, right? So um, it's, it's a lot of places I haven't visited, but those in, in the States, outside of the States, the Bahamas, one of my favorite places to go to, um, obviously Colombia, but I'm biased. Um, and also, um, what's, where else did I go that I really loved? Um, oh, you know what? Calgary, Canada. You know, I've never been to Toronto, but I've been to Calgary and Calgary was amazing. I went when it's warm. So don't invite me out there when it's cold. Calgary is awesome. Like it, it's pretty dope. They say Vancouver is even prettier. So I might, I might check out Vancouver. So, all right, moving on. So, um, are all Colombians as humble as I am? That's, <laughs> that's like, uh, that's, that's a tough question to answer. I can't speak to all Columbus. I can just speak for me, myself and I. Um, so you just gonna have to try your luck on that one. So I don't know. Uh, motorcycles. Have I ever been on a motorcycle? Have I owned a motorcycle? Yes. Fun fact. I've been riding for about 12, 13 years now. October of last year, I got in my first accident. Um, I was riding down 45 highway here. That's very busy. I was riding, riding. It was like 7, 7.30 p.m. October of last year. So, you know, it got darker a lot quicker. This truck, he had a trailer connected to it. He got over and his trailer was wiggling behind and it hit my front tire. I was kind of far from it, but his trailer just kept trailing and it hit my front tire and I flew. I flipped off the bike, flew like 40 yards, rolled, slid, and that was it. Like, I remember everything. Like, I remember flying off the motorcycle. I had a helmet on, I had my jacket, I had jeans on, all that got tore up. My helmet was cracked, my, my leather jacket was tore up. I had so much road rash. My jeans, 
They went from being regular jeans to distressed. They was completely torn. I was like, Freddy Krueger just went, wham. Wolverine just went, wham on my jeans. It was, it was done. So um, this thumb here, I don't know if you can see it. Oh, you probably can't notice it here. Now it's hard to notice, but this thumb is a little bigger than this thumb. So this thumb, when I got into the accent, I had gloves on too, and all my hands was jacked up. When I got into the accent, you know how this thumb bends this way? Well, this one was bent that way. So this thing was that way when I got to the hospital and the doctor just looked at it and he was like, ah, bah, and he popped it back. So yeah, that was a fun little thing. So no broken bones, thank God. No, nothing wrong with my head, no brain, nothing, 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 nothing. So I, I was, I was good. I flew and it was pretty, it was a lot of cars. Like as soon as I landed, the first thing I did was sit up and look behind me. Cause I knew it was like, so I had to be like 20 or 30 cars behind me and everybody stopped. And it was like a good 30 yards from me. So I was happy that they stopped because obviously I would have been ran over. So got rid of that bike. Haven't bought a bike since. I will though. I'm just, I've just been too busy and it's been raining. Weather's been crappy in Houston. So it's like, what's the point of getting a bike right now? So I'm gonna wait till the weather gets better. I will get on another bike. I'm not, I'm not scared to get on a, on a bike. How fast was I going? I was literally going to speed limit because I was, my exit was coming up. I was actually, by, if, if he wouldn't have, been there, I would have already made my way towards my exit. I was going like 65 and the speed limit there's like 60. So I wasn't even going that fast and I couldn't avoid them because there was a car right next to me. So if I would have shifted to the left, I would have bumped that car. So it was kind of like I had to either stop really fast or I don't know what the hell I could. I mean, if I would have stopped really fast, I would have flew off the bike anyway. So it is what it is, but love bikes, love motorcycles. I will be getting another motorcycle. Have I, have I ever owned a boxer? Yes, I've had a boxer when I was younger. Dog, um, Tyson. All right. Um, somebody asked me, if do I think there'll ever be gay couples on maps or lesbians? They said gay or lesbian couples on maps. Um, I think so. I mean, why not? I think eventually they'll have a couple like that. I don't see why not. Uh, do I cook a grill? I cook. I, I'm not a great griller. I know every guy expect. Every guy thinks they're their best griller, and they probably are. But I know my weaknesses. I know my strengths. I'm a better cooker than I'm a griller. Um, vacation of a lifetime. Um, man, it just depends. If I'm going by myself, I would say like Bora Bora. I would love to go to Bora Bora. It's beautiful. Uh, if I'm if it's like with the homies and stuff like that, I'm thinking like. Uh, Ibiza or Palmas de Mallorca, which is the island next to Ibiza, which is, which is you know, the islands that Spain owns. So something like that. If I'm going with the fellas, it's a big group of us, you know, like a little boat party or something like that. That'll be dope. <sighs> what made me sign up for Mavs? Have I watched it? I already answered. I've never watched Mavs before. I didn't sign up for Mavs. I was recruited. So somebody recommended me to be on the show. They hit me up and I decided you know, to hear him out. And then he told me what was the show about. And then I told him, give me a week and I'll let you know. I went to Netflix, watched the only season they had, which was nine, if I'm not mistaken, Charlotte. And I was like, then I talked to a few friends and they all watched the show and they all hyped me up and it was like, do it, do it, do it. And so, yeah, so I ended up doing it. Uh, personal training. Yes, I was a personal trainer for 11 years before I went into the fire department. I still kind of train online, a few of my clients, still close to a lot of my clients, my old clients, um, build a lot of relationships. Uh, do they accept singles with kids on Married at First Sight? They do not. So you can be previously married, but you cannot have any kids. And I feel like it's because of that third party, if the you know father's still involved or the mother's still involved, I feel like it's just too many. I believe, I don't know, but I know for a fact they don't accept singles with uh, kids. I just feel like they probably think this might be a little sticky situation. Hype, my man Hype. Hype is 12 years old. Hype will be 13 in February, March. He'll be 13 in March. I've had him since he was six weeks. Um, a friend of mine's, his dog had puppies and he was, he needed to get rid of them. And I told him I'll take one. And so he gave me one. So I had Hype since he was six weeks. That's my boy, 12 year old, old man Hype. Um, has Mirla apologized or gave a reason? So she has not apologized. Like I said, I haven't spoken to her since the reunion. She knows she has not apologized. I don't expect her to apologize. I don't want an apology. Um, she did not ever give me a reason. What y'all heard is what I heard. Put it like that. I know it might be edited or not, but exactly what y'all heard is what I heard. So we'll just leave it at that. Um, 
podcast interviews. Uh, yeah, I do. I am going to do some podcast interviews. My PR rep is working on that right now. I'm actually doing a podcast in Dallas on su- this Sunday. So I fly out for the day to Dallas. I don't have time to meet with anybody. Sorry. I'm sorry. Because it's just in and out. It's like I get there in the morning, do the podcast afternoon, and I fly back to Houston. So all my people from D-Town, sorry, I don't have time to like grab a drink or anything. If, I, if it was like a whole day thing or two day thing, I definitely would, but I do not. Um, Celebrity crush. So I'm going to give y'all my top. I, I got a few of them. So first and foremost, the late, great um, Naya Rivera. Um, y'all remember her. She unfortunately passed away trying to save her kid, but that was a big celebrity crush of mine. Um, Rihanna, Sandra Bullock, Gabrielle Union, and Rosalind Sanchez to top off that. So those are my celebrity crushes. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Weight loss due. Okay, so somebody asked me if my weight loss was due to the heartache. Yes and no. So, yeah, she broke up with me. Obviously, I was devastated. Um, And then I did. But at the same time, there was a trip we had planned. For her birthday, she wanted to go to Cancun. And so we was going to go to Cancun. And so I kind of was working out for that. But then the breakup happened. So it kind of like all intertwined. I I didn't stop working out. I still got my workout on. I ended up going to Costa Rica and they ended up going to Cancun. So I still took a trip. I just, and I was summer ready. So I was like, I'm not going to stop now. So it was kind of, yes, I was working out. I guess I worked out a little bit more because of the breakup. Cause I was doing cardio for like two hours. So that, and that's, I don't like cardio. So for me to do it for two hours, just cause I wasn't trying to go home. Um, where we at? Where we at? All right. Top three bars in Houston um, or restaurants. So this is tricky because it just depends on what you like. Um, I'm going to give a shout out to my boy Ryan. I don't know if he's on, but Moxie's. Check out Moxie's Houston. It's dope. Um, uh, if you like, if you want to try some Colombian food, my favorite spot is called La Oja. La Oja like the pot. La Oja. It's delicious. They got two locations. Um, and I'm not getting paid for none of this stuff. This is just my favorite spots. Sushi. If you like sushi, Uptown Sushi. So good. It's a lot of good sushi spots, but that's one of my favorites. So I would say Uptown Sushi is one of my, uh, bars. Um, Kirby Ice House is dope because, you know, it's dog friendly. It's huge. has a huge patio, has huge big screen, especially the original one off of West Alabama. Um, that's a dope spot, but there's so many bars that I just can't name them, but those are like the top ones I go to, and I give y'all restaurants and kind of bars, so kind of kind of give y'all a little uh, idea of uh, what I'm into. How often do I go home, and what's the first thing I do when I go home? So how often do I go to Columbia? So before COVID, I was going twice a year, minimum. No, once a year minimum, but at least twice a year. That don't make sense. At least once a year, but sometimes twice. Um, but after COVID, but COVID hit and I hadn't been gone. I hadn't been there in two years because obviously they shut the city down. They wouldn't let nobody in. So that's why I just went this year, not too long ago. But the first thing I do is bread. I buy bread. I freaking, man, let me tell y'all something. When y'all go to these, these countries, these South American, Central American countries, y'all got to eat this bread. This bread is nothing like the bread they sell here. Like these bakeries down there, I don't know what the heck they make it with. Like the ones I like have cheese in it inside and not like, I can't even explain it. It's not like Kraft singles or nothing, not that type of cheese. I don't even know how to explain the cheese, but the bread, oh. So that's why I make sure to always lose 10 pounds before I go to Columbia because I'm going to gain it so fast eating bread. It's so freaking good. So first thing I do is buy bread. Um, when I get to Columbia and then obviously my mom, she makes all my favorite foods and stuff like that. So I don't have to cook, right? Huh? Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Do you think I will? Oh, this is a good question. Somebody said, somebody asked me, do you, do I think that you can find equal love? Meaning that, do you think you can find somebody that can love you as much as you love them? She says, they, she said that they, that most, most people say no. And she doesn't believe that. I'm going to agree with her. I don't believe that. So the thing about that is you have to think. See, that's the the reason why people say no. And my, this is all my opinions, right? I don't know anything. But the reason why I think people say no is because 
they're thinking of it as a one mind. They're only thinking of it from their point of view. So meaning that if you are with somebody, their love might not equal your love, meaning that how you perceive love, but this is probably that this is probably their highest form of love. But you're probably here because that's who you are. But this person, this is this is where they cap out at. This is what they know. This is all they know. And this is and they this is the most they've done. They've done and this is how they show love. But you're you're probably more more. Right. But that doesn't mean this person don't love you as much in their eyes. They're loving you as much as you do. But in your eyes, you don't. So this is where I think the confusion comes. You got to understand. This goes back to trying to understand people, seeing where how they come. I mean, what they're about, seeing their background and stuff like that. So. I do believe people can equally love each other. It's just you need to understand what is love. What does love mean to you and what does love mean to that person? And if you can understand that, you can probably be like, oh, yeah, this person actually does is head over heels for me. They just don't show it in this way like I show it or they don't do the thing. So that's how I feel about it. So I absolutely believe um, two people can equally love each other. It's just. It's just love is different in everybody's eyes. So it's it's a you gotta have a conversation. It's communication. It goes back to communication. Uh all right, all right, all right. Where we at? I think I'm done with that. What do I contribute my communication skills to? And would I write a book? That's a good question. Um, I never thought about writing a book, but that I might have to put that on a bucket list. I might, I might just I might just have to write a book. I just don't know where I would start. But what do I contribute my communication skills with? Um, as you can see, I'm a very talkative person. So I, I'm very comfortable talking. I can talk in front of people. I have no problems with public speaking. I think my communication skills comes from trial and error. Um, just saying the right things, saying the bad things, and just messing up and learning from that, and then just going from there, especially when it comes down to my relationship. So when my exes... Um, I have one question on there that said, if I, am I cool with my exes? I think I'm cool with all my exes, but one, um, and we occasionally every blue moon say hi to each other. But, um, other than that, and I've asked them, I've asked a few of my exes, like, Hey, you know, what, what negative qualities did I have when we were together? And you know, they, they might, I don't know what they think when I ask them that, but I'm legit just asking just to see if, you know, see where I'm at, you know, because those are things that you want to, you want to get better. You shouldn't be the same person that you were in the past. And you definitely don't want to bring that, those negative qualities onto your next relationship. So I ask questions like that. I love constructive criticism. I don't get offended by it. Um, if you, if you're legitimately telling me this to make me better, then I'm off ears. I'm all ears. So I've always asked, like, even with my clients, when I was training them, I'm like, Hey, you know, I know what I'm doing. I know this is what you need to do, but how, how is this working for you? You know, is this style working for you? Like, do, are you understanding this? Because people learn differently. So it's like, I'm all about constructive criticism, I'm all about getting feedback. So like I said, my communication skills is, um, I would contribute just to trial and error. I was, a, like I said, I was a personal trainer. So it was a lot of networking, a lot of lead generation. So I had to, I'm a sales, personal trainers are salesmen. They have to sell you their product, the product and the product is them. And you got to trust them. So I was a salesman for 11 plus years and I had to, and I was a pretty good salesman. So therefore I had a lot of ups and downs and I learned from them. And so I guess that's why, and I, I don't bite my tongue either. Like plenty of my coworkers will tell you I have zero filter. Like if, if I think it, I'm saying it. So, um, and that's where a lot of my mistakes come from. So it is what it is. Sometimes good, sometimes bad, but hey, that's life, right? We're not perfect. Um... Had they teased me at the firehouse? So luckily for me, I'm not at the station right now. I'm not in the field because I'm in paramedic school. So, but they still, it still gets around. Words gets around and I still get teased. On the weekends, I do work overtime. So I do go to the stations um, here and there. So I do get teased for sure. If y'all know firefighters or first responders in general, paramedics, EMTs, cops, um, we, it's, man, it's like a freaking, it's like being, it's like playing sports in high school all over again. They're always trying to haze you. They're always trying to prank you and they always tease you. So yes, they've been getting on my behind a lot for being on the show for, for a lot of the things, just, just clowning me here and there. So it's cool, but it's, it's, it's fun. They're not trying to hurt me. Oh, they probably are. Who cares? Um, how did I become so patient? I don't know. Honestly, I don't know. Cause I've never... <laughs> 
<laughs> as a kid, I was never patient. I wanted, I wanted it now. Like, give it. I want it now. So I grew up as a single kid, as a single child. I have siblings. I have a sister that grew up in Colombia, and I was brought here when I was four. So, and then my brothers are from different. Uh, we had same dads, so they didn't grow. I didn't grow up in the same household as none of my siblings. So, I don't understand how I became so patient because I've always like. I mean, I never asked for stuff, but when I was gonna get something, I wanted it now. So, I feel like just that came on recently for me. Um, like I was saying, the past ten years, I guess you could say. But that's because when you really want something, my thought process on that is when you really want something and it's worth it, then you need to do everything you need. You need to do everything in your capabilities to make it happen. So whether it's you need to be patient, whether you need to be aggressive and proactive, like do whatever it takes to get what you need, you know, whatever it requires. And so that's how I look at things. And even if I have to be patient, then I got to be patient if it's worth it. If it's not worth it, then don't waste your time. But if you truly believe it's worth it, and you're going in it with a good heart and and obviously you thought about it, then why not? What's a little patient? What's a little time? So a lot of people gripe on me and ask me, you know, did she really wait a long time to kiss you? Yeah, she waited. It was like a month before I got my first kiss from her. Um, and yeah, it was strange for me. I don't think I went that long ever without a girl kissing me or me kissing someone. But I, I looked at it as, you know what? Look, this is gonna be my wife. I'm gonna be with her for the rest of my life. If I got to wait a month, a month is nothing compared to the years that we're going to spend together. So it's just a drop in the bucket. So it is what it is. So that's how I look at it. And so that's why I guess that's how my patience comes about. It's just how bad do I want it? What are we talking about? And is it worth it? So I guess, but I was not a patient kid. So I don't know where I came from. Um, where does hype likes to hang, like to hang out? He mainly likes to hang out here in the crib. He just likes to chill. But he also loves going to the park because he loves swimming and he loves uh, loves balls. He he loves balls a little too much. Like he's too fascinated with balls. I, sometimes I have to like like you know like get on his behind because he will he will every ball he sees he has to go get. He's greedy with them balls. All right, <sighs> boxers or briefs or boxer briefs. Boxer briefs, for sure. That's what I rock, boxer briefs. Uh, takes on being a Christian and any pressure because of the cameras. No, absolutely not. I'm a Christian. I told y'all that guys that there was zero pressure from the cameras or being on on, on TV or whatnot. But uh, I don't think they showed us praying a lot. We prayed a lot. Every time we got um, into, every time we got together with the with everybody else and, you know, we were, we were eating, because most of the time we were eating. Um, we would pray. Uh, I make sure we'd pray. Um, so it was no pressure. I mean, I'm not afraid to say I'm a Christian. I'm not ashamed of it. And it is what it is. Whether you like it or not, that's on you. It has nothing to do with me. So, um, so and about that, somebody asked me a question about that. Would I, so where's that question at? Would I date someone who didn't believe in a higher being? No, I would not. Um, I don't care if you're a Muslim, Jewish, Buddhist, whatever. You got to believe in something. So uh, I, I don't think I could I could date somebody that doesn't believe in anything higher than us. Like you got to believe in something. So like an atheist, um, agnostic, like, yeah, I guess because you kind of believe, but you're not sure. But atheist, like you could just completely like, nah, uh-uh. That I don't think I could do it. Um, it's just values. It's just, it's just we just don't share the same values there, and that's probably one value I just won't bend with. Um, do, 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 do. How did the experts? Do you think the experts match based on compatibility? So that's a good question. So from the looks of it, my perception of that, um, my thoughts on how the experts match you. Yes, you give them a list of stuff that you want. And the list of stuff that you don't want. I feel like they come as close as they can to that. But I feel like what they try to do is find the person that can come as close to that, but has something that this person is missing. And they try to, you know, fill that in and vice versa. Um, so I feel like I had qualities that could probably help um, my then wife. And she has qualities that could probably help me. And so they feel like that's more important than the small stuff. Like, you know, she said she didn't want a bald guy. She So they felt like, okay, she definitely doesn't want a bald guy, but is that more important than somebody that's willing to be this, that, and the other with her? 
So that's how I feel like they match people. I don't. I personally don't think they try to match people for the drama because their goal is for them to stay together. There's gonna be drama. It don't matter who they match with who. There's gonna be drama no matter what because these are two strangers coming in. So I don't think they need to even worry about that. That's gonna happen because these are two strangers, two different worlds coming together. That's gonna happen. Even, even. In everyday life, when you meet somebody, however you meet somebody, you're going to run into drama with them. So I don't think the experts do. There's no need for them to purposely do that. So I truly feel that they try to just get two people and try to match them based off what they need to, for a long lasting relationship. But the biggest problem I feel like is contestants, people that get on the show do not are not ready to change who they are. People, the thing about it, when, we're, when we get older and we make this adult money and we make these decisions, and especially if you like, a, like you your own boss and stuff like that, the issue is, so my advice for anybody that's gonna be on a show or wants to be on a show is you have to be willing to change a little bit about you. You have to, it's compromise. Marriage is all about compromise. You cannot go into it saying, I'm not gonna change who I am. You have to be willing to adjust. I know people don't like change. I know people don't like adjustment, but sometimes it's for the better. So you have to be open-minded. If you're not going to be open-minded, then don't sign up for it because nobody's going to, I mean, you might as well just marry yourself. Just get in front of that mirror and say, I do, because nobody's going to just take you completely as is without, it's give and take. It's give and take. It's a partnership, right? It's just like, no, nah, not even like work. Sometimes work make you do it and you got to do it or you just, or you quit or whatever. But and a relationship is give and take. So you have to be willing to, you know, give a little and also take a little. All right. Hmm. Favorite movie, favorite book, and favorite TV show or Truth or Dare. I will always pick Dare over on Truth or Dare. Uh, favorite TV show, hands down, no exceptions, Martin. That's my favorite TV show. That's the funniest TV show ever. I don't care. I don't know if y'all too young to watch. I don't know what's the demographic in this chat, but Martin, for sure. Hands down. Um, favorite book is, I don't, the book, The Secret. That's one of my favorite. I don't know if it's my favorite book, but it's a book that I've read a couple of times. It's called The Secret. If y'all never read it, um, it's pretty good. And it, it's all about positivity. Um, so it's the funny thing is about how your mindset being positive and positive things will happen. So um, I'm a somewhat believer in that. So yeah, The Secret is, is one of my favorite books for sure. Um, favorite movie? Man, I don't know, man. That's a that's a good one. That's it's a lot of them. Mm, man, it would be better if like it was genres. But I would say one of my favorite movies is Enemy of the State with Will Smith. That's I can watch that movie on repeat. I don't care how many times it comes on. For some reason, that movie is just dope for me. But that's like one genre. Like, man, it's it's so many movies I like. So. But I would say, let's stick with Enemy of the State. Because there's a lot more, but that'll, that'll take a while. Because I've seen a lot of movies. I got a lot of them. Home Alone is up there. Come on now. Who don't like Home Alone? That's a classic. Uh, fire Chief. Do I ever become... Do I? My goals of being a Fire Chief. Uh, no. I don't think I have a goal of being a Fire Chief. That's too much delegation and not enough actual action. Um, I want to actually do stuff. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't mind being a Chief. But not a fire chief. I don't want to be the head of the department. I want to. I want to still be right there with everybody um, and delegate. Um, being able to do a little more than what a fire chief. Fire chief is. It's a lot of politics in being a fire chief when you're that high. And you know, I respect those guys that do it. I don't think that's for me though. I need to be in the trenches. So I don't think um, fire chief is in my future. Um, a lot of people ask, "Am I going to quit the fire department now because of this newfound?" fame that y'all call this little ig world this is not real um no absolutely not i'm not about to quit the fire department i love doing my job so no i don't care what comes about i'm gonna stick with it it have it would have to be like something ridiculous that i couldn't pass up for me to quit the fire department i only work so let's say exclude school right paramedic school that's gonna end in may whatever i'll be done when i get back in the field i work seven days a month i work two days a week i get five days off and once every 33 days, we get we got to work one extra day. But for the most part, I work two days a week. Come on. Like, why would I quit that? I got a great pension. 
No, I can do anything I want with those five days a week. I can get a second job. I can work on something on my own. I can whatever. So why would I quit a job where the schedule is that flexible? So no, I would. I could still do this and be working a full time job. So nah, I ain't going. That ain't going nowhere. Oh, uh, let's see. Would I do another dating show? Short answer, no. Um. Something that the show did not portray. So they did portray it, but it just wasn't in the best. I don't think it was the best. Um, and I'm going to say, and I took it personal, was my uh, salsa skills. I dance way better than that. I'm not going to say I'm a pro or anything, but I dance way better than what the show revealed. It was just awkward. Because there wasn't any music. They couldn't play any music. I had to put the music in my head and just start dancing. And it's, I don't, it's just awkward. So I need, I need music. I need, I mean, a partner would be great. But I mean, I can dance with the broom if I have to. But the way they portrayed my salsa skills, I, pr I did not appreciate that. So somebody asked me if I dance on one or two. So for people that haven't danced salsa, when you take classes, you either dance on one or you dance on two. Well, I dance on none. Because I don't, I didn't learn that way. I learned what we call salsa callejero, which is street salsa. So I learned listening to the music and you move based off how you listen to the music. That's how I learned. So I have trouble dancing with people that learn to dance salsa in the studio because I'm not on steps. I'm not counting. I'm listening to the song while you guys are counting. I'm not knocking it because it's wonderful y'all know y'all dance amazing and it's very pretty but i we clash it's like i'm dancing to the music and y'all dancing to the lyrics it's like it ain't working so it's like that's the only reason i can't um dance with people that's like on one or two like what you no nah, i dance salsa callejero so yes street salsa that's how i learned how to dance and a lot of it was just me looking, observing, seeing people that I, moves that I like that people did. I was like, mm, okay, I'm gonna put that in a rotation. I'll try it out, perfect it, and then we go from there. That's how you learn. That's how you keep it going. All right, uh, salsa merengue, easy, salsa. So we have this thing, we have, it's not a saying, but we say in Colombia that merengue es para los que no saben bailar salsa. So merengue is for those that don't know how to dance salsa. Um, it's kind of like a knock on people that don't know how to dance. Merengue is very fun. I mean, you can even two a one year old can dance some merengue. Like merengue is fun. It's just a that's it's like Zumba. It's like a cardio workout. It's just way too fast and way too long. And it's fun. I can dance it. But if I'm gonna pick, oh salsa, light years ahead, light years ahead. And I would do bachata then merengue. So and I love bachata too. So it'll be it will go in that order. Salsa, bachata, merengue. Man, it'll probably go salsa, bachata, cumbia, merengue. That's, merengue is cool, but mm, it ain't my style. <sighs> would I do Dancing with the Stars? Absolutely, I would do Dancing with the Stars. I freaking love to dance, and I love how they do. I love all of everything about Dancing with the Stars. It's dope. Um, has this experience changed my views on love and marriage? So initially, yes. Um, initially. Uh, but no, not anymore. Um, you know, after therapy therapy there we go another shout out to therapy um and just you know just staying true to who i am um the goal is still the same the goal is still to find a, a wife get married have a kid or two or three um and and live a happily ever after but so it hasn't changed so now um i'm still i'm still i still got the same game plan i still want to uh find that one that one person for me and, and make her life as amazing as I can and make our lives as good as I can and then go from there so um no it has not in the long run has not changed my views on love and marriage uh favorite memory with my pop so apparently um people had said that I didn't talk about my dad a lot I thought I did um fun fact I haven't watched any episodes of my season um nothing nada so I don't know what they showed um, friends send me clips, so that's the only thing. That's all I know. So I don't know what they actually showed. Memories with my so a fun memory with my dad was when I was like, I must have been four or five. He bought me some boxing gloves, and so I was, you know, boxing. He he had his hands up, and we were going back and forth, yada yada yada. We'd do that like every day or whatnot. 
And one day, um, I caught them. I caught him. Just, I mean, he didn't put, I don't know. He didn't put his hand up or something. <sighs> Hit him dead in his nose. Blood. Just immediately like that. I'm like four or five. I'm, I didn't mean to do it. Right? Man, my dad got up so fast and got that belt. <laughs> Excuse me. I could, man, I can remember that like it was yesterday. I was like, what? Like, so my mom defended me. So I didn't get a whooping. But if my mom wouldn't have been there, I would have got a whooping of a lifetime. And I was like, come on, man. Like, I didn't purposely try to knock you out or make you or make your nose bleed. It was, it was an accident. But um, that's one of my favorite moments of my dad. Because my dad, he was a little hot and cold. I describe my dad as, I don't know, like I said, I don't know the demographics up in here. But if you ever watch Good Times, another great show. Um, he's like Michael Evans. Um, so he was stern, very stern, but he was fair. So he was cool peoples. Um, and if y'all don't know, my dad passed away back in 99, if y'all don't know, but, uh, yeah, yeah, he was cool. He was just stern. Um, so like I said, he was hot and cold, but he was my dad. I loved him. I had a good relationship with him. I actually lived with my dad. As y'all know, um, I saw the tragedy happen. I lived with my dad up until his uh, demise. And then I moved and then because my mom and my dad were separated at the time. And then after that happened, I moved in with my mom. So me and my so me and my, my dad and my mom. So it's all good. All right. I think we're towards the end. So what I'm about to do now, my upbringing. OK, let's talk about that real quick. My upbringing. So, um, I, so, um, I, and now I'm going to go to these questions right here in the comments and then we'll be done. So I won't keep y'all too long. I'm going to be a 78 minute one today. Uh, my upbringing. So quick little, let's run through this real quick. I was born in Colombia. I was born in Buenaventura, Colombia. Um, brought here when I was four years old, stayed here until about eight, went back to Cali, Colombia, cause all my family eradicated to Cali. Um, or they moved to Cali, I should say. And so then I stayed there till about 11, came back, and I've been here ever since. Uh, I had a normal childhood. Uh, got into a little trouble here and there. I was a class clown when I was a kid. I was very talkative, as y'all can see. Um, chubby. I was chubby my whole life as a kid. Um, I don't think I started losing weight till like junior year, and I was playing sports. And I, until junior year in high school, um, that's when I got into like, I was still lifting. I just don't know what the hell happened. Um, <laughs> but, uh, my childhood was, was pretty, pretty normal. I mean, I went through almost every, like I said, I was born, I was raised as a, as a single, uh, kid. So we didn't have a lot, but what I did have, I was happy for. So I was just happy sitting in front of the TV, watching Tom and Jerry eating rice, beans, and maudo, which is fried plantains out and an egg. I was happy with that. And fruity pebbles, fruity Look, let me tell you something. If anybody knows me from my childhood, they know I used to eat Fruity Pebbles for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Favorite cereal of all time. I haven't eaten it in like eight years because I don't eat cereal anymore. But hands down, favorite cereal of all time. Do not come at me with your Cinnamon Toast Crunch. <clears throat> don't come at me with your Chocolate Chip um, Ahoy. Whatever them damn uh, cereals called. Don't come at me with no Fruit Loops, no Cheerios, that 80-year-old cereal. Don't frosted flakes, Tony, get out of there. No, fruity pebbles is where it's at. Cocoa pebbles, <clears throat> fruity pebbles is where it's at. And people know I used to. It's funny because this is how much I love fruity pebbles when I was a kid. So the the two years, the two three years I spent in Colombia, my dad. So you couldn't get fruity pebbles in Colombia. That you can get almost any cereal, but for some reason you couldn't get fruity pebbles. My dad used to send me a box of like twelve to fifteen cereal boxes in like you know she sent me a shipment of cereal boxes every two months or so however i went through them <coughs> excuse me topo chico on deck um and yeah i i love fruity pebbles anybody that knows me from my from my childhood up until like Man, I used, man, I ate fruity pebbles until like tenth grade of high school. I used to eat it for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I freaking loved that cereal. Um, like I said, I don't eat it anymore, but yeah, that's a big part of my childhood. Um, other than that, uh, yeah. So because I lived in Colombia for those two, two, two for those three years, uh, that's how I learned how to read, write, or I perfected to read, write, and speak um, Spanish. 
But yeah, so that's my childhood. High school was cool. Took me a while to get to college, but I got to college. Took me a while to graduate, but I graduated. Um, and it is what it is. No, Fruit Loops, get the hell out of here with that Fruit Loops stuff. Um, Fruity Pebble Candle, that's pretty dope. All right, so uh, why did I stop being serious? So I'm now reading off the comments. So if y'all want to drop some comments, we crapped and crunch. Um, why did I stop eating cereal? Uh, it's just one part. Of, I'm meal prep now, right? So my meal prep, my breakfast is, is usually a smoothie. Actually, it's not usually, it is a smoothie. That's the very first thing I always eat. It's, um, it's, I got it from my boy when I used to, when I started training, he called it Superman, Superman smoothie. And so my boy Desmond, I don't know if he's in here, but shout outs to Desmond. He's the one who introduced me to it. So I've been doing it forever. I've been doing it, when I say forever, I've been doing this freaking smoothie for at least 15 years. I've been doing this smoothie for a long time. So that's why when, <laughs> that's why when I sold everything, um, and the only thing I took with me was the blender, my and my clothes is because I need that blender. My Ninja, come on, man. That's the best blender in the, on, a, on a planet. Commer that's the best commercial blender on a planet. Um... But uh, yeah, so the soup, my soup man smoothie is basically just water, Greek, Greek yogurt, uh, granola, um, your choice of fruits, peanut butter, and I put an emergency in there. Um, and I, my favorite emergency is a uh, strawberry kiwi. Um, get those vitamins, get thousand milligrams of vitamin C's real quick. Um, and yeah, that's man, I freaking love it. Uh, so that's my very first thing. And if I'm like out of town or traveling or whatever, and I can't get a smoothie, then eggs. Eggs is the eggs is my is my jam. And my favorite, obviously, breakfast is my favorite food. Um, like a lot of people, my favorite breakfast food is French toast. Oh, freaking love. Just my mouth started watering just thinking about French toast. So it's, I freaking love French toast. So I think the best, hands down, the best French toast I've ever had so far. I forget the name of the restaurant. I wish I knew the name, but it was in Portland, Oregon. They had the French, it came in like balls. Man, when I tell you, I was like in shock how good that thing was. I forgot the name of the little a restaurant, but um, yeah, it was delicious. So yeah, that's why I stopped eating cereal. It just, it just wasn't, it didn't fit the macros, I guess you could say. It wasn't part of my meal prep. Um, and then obviously a lot of chicken. Um, I do, I personally do a lot of ground ground beef um, or ground turkey because chicken gets old real quick. I'll eat chicken for like two weeks and I'm like, all right, I need to switch this up. So I can stick with ground beef and turkey for a long time before I get tired of it. And then I'll throw chicken back in the mix. And obviously I love my seafood. If I'm a binge a little bit, then my seafood is where it's at. All right. Let's see, what else, what else we got? Throw some questions out there and I will answer them. I'm gonna be on there for like 10 more minutes and then we out. Um, love you too, Mary. Uh, let's see, where's my boy Ryan? I don't know where Ryan's at. I don't know if he's logged on or what, but yeah. Why did I shave my beard? Cause of work, how's hype? He's he's good and he's in Austin. Ooh, he's so loud, pojo. I love it, love it, love it, love it. I'm 36 years old. I just answered the beard thing. Would I ever do a meet and greet? Yeah, I actually would. I talked to my PR rep about that and she's she's gonna see what's up. Um, oh, my mom. Yeah, somebody asked me, has my mom ever lived in Columbia? No, my mom moved back to Columbia. January will be seven years. She lived here for 20 years. When she moved back seven years ago to take care of my grandma, her mom, which has, has recently, I mean, has since passed away. Um, my grandma passed away two years ago. So, you know, you go back, that's what we do in a Hispanic household. Um, we take care of our, our parents. So my mom went back to take care, even though she has siblings, but they whack. They, they right there, they down the street and they don't want to take care of them. My mom, uh, thousands of miles away, have to fly back to go take care of my mom, but it is what it is. That's my mom, I'm telling y'all, that lady's a saint. Not just because it's my mom, but that lady's a saint. So she went back and seven years ago, um, grandma passed away two years ago. And she plans on coming back possibly next year. So it just depends. She she has some things going on over there. So it's it's on her. Um it's it's whenever she wants to come. She's she can I mean she won't be staying with me, but yeah, she can she can come back for sure. Um yeah, I'll be in Vegas. I'll be in Vegas in February. So I think the the weekend of the fifth, I'll be in Vegas. So how tall am I? I'm six foot with socks on. 
So, I already talked about my tattoos. I don't want to go through that again. What section? Cardiology. That's where I'm at in paramedic, and it's kicking my butt. That stuff is so hard. Um, I just had a test on it. Didn't do too good, but I got a finals next week. I, I'll make it up during the finals. I have been to the. I have been to Detroit. My brother lives in Detroit. Um, Katy, Texas. That's just down the street. I got a lot of people in Katy, Texas. Uh, let's see. With socks on. Yes. Six foot with socks on. It makes a big difference. Uh, grow my dread. No, this is way too easy. I'm not growing my dreads out. Uh, te dices del secreto. What the heck you talking about, Willie? Um, hey, I'm going to take care of parents. Blah, blah, blah. Oh, hey, what's up? Christmas plans. No Christmas plans. Um, if I'm not working... Me and Hype just going to chill out at the house and watch Christmas movies. You know, the same old Christmas story, uh, Home Alone, all the good stuff. It's a Wonderful Life, all the classics. El Violin. <sighs> Willie, 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 Willie. What's up, Nat? I see you. So y'all asked about my ex, one of my exes. She's in there. We still cool. She cools peoples. We still talk from time to time. Celebrity Crush, I already saw that. I already mentioned that. You just gonna have to go back and and um see it over. What sign? I'm a Taurus. May 5th is my birthday. Cinco to Drinko. Uh, any plans for tonight? Yeah, I'm actually about to go grab a drink with uh with someone after this. So y'all need to get out of my business though. But yeah, are you feeling are people mailing me? You know what? So I went to go check my mailbox today because a few people said they sent me stuff, but nothing has come in. So next live, it's not going to be next week. Just know that. I'm not having a live next week. But uh, whenever I do have my next live, I'll show y'all what people sent me. Um, I didn't have anything in it today. So and I'll let y'all know if I send anything back because, you know, I, I ain't, mm -mm. we don't play those games. Yeah, nosy. Nosy ass people. Nosy. I mean, look at y'all. Y'all all up in here. Y'all nosy. You're about to... No, I'm not about to clap no cheeks. It's just a friend. <laughs> it's just a friend that's in town. So we're going to cra grab a drink. Uh, would you get married again? Yeah, I'd get married. Yes. I absolutely want to get married. Um, no, people keep talking about wife swapping. I already talked about that in my last one. This ain't... We ain't doing wife musical chairs. No, I'm not doing that. How many women are you dating? I'm not dating anybody, as you guys know. I'm not dating. I'm taking a break. So they do want the cheese, man. They, they, y'all are some cheese mozos y cheese mozas. Hey, groovy girl. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Oh, you know what? Let me talk about that. So my gap, I had a little gap, as y'all know, on the show, and I did get that fixed. Not because of TV or not because I'm going Hollywood, because I had braces for three years. You know what it's like to wear braces for three years and then lose your retainer? And then this crap just wants to part like the Red Sea. That pissed me off so bad. So that's why I fixed it, because I wasn't going to let that money go to waste and them three years of wearing braces go to waste. So that's why I fixed my, my gap. Um, my boy Gustavo Alegria in Cali, Colombia. Holla at my man. He um he did it. It's some it's some bonding. It's not veneers. It's bonding. Um, cause it was just you all saw the gap. It wasn't like it wasn't like this. So it was just a little gap. So I just it was it was real quick. We fixed it real quick. Um, yeah, man. I'm down for life. I'm telling you, you lose them retainers. It's like it's a waste. It's like you might as well just start. You might as well put them retainers on permanently. Because it's a waste to rock those freaking braces and then a week later you lose your retainer and it's like, all right, well, we out. And they just start opening up and you're like, what the freak? I've spent all this time trying to get these things straight. So thank you for people that said I, I like teeth. I am into teeth. Who isn't into teeth? A nice set of teeth. Man, that makes a gorgeous smile. So yes, definitely. Um... Yeah, I know they have permanent retainers, but my freaking orthodontist didn't tell me about them. So I love stand-up comedy. I freaking love it. It's been a while since I watched stand-up comedy, but who? It's a lot of people I like. Obviously, everybody knows about the big people like Chappelle and Chris Rock and all, and Kevin Hart and all of that. But I like the 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 locals too. Um, Y'all know Tony Baker on Instagram. He's hilarious. 
Kirkpatrick. Um, and but all the other dudes on Instagram was pretty funny too. Uh, I don't have any plans on visiting New Jersey. Um, but I mean, I would. I just don't have any plans. No, I'm not knocking New Jersey. Um, we do have a lot in common, don't we? Tasty cookie. Um, uh, oh, my DMs. Yes, I still got them things. I accidentally opened it and y'all sneaked in and sent like a hundred. Oh, y'all gotta chill out. Yeah, um, I'm still trying to get back to people. People are like, man, I forgot I even wrote you. See, that's how far it's been <laughs> since I'm trying to respond to people. So I'm still trying to get the people. Still got a lot, a lot um, to get to. Yes, I do know how to cook Colombian food. I will say my boy Willie, though, can probably cook a little better than me. Um, we got to have a cook-off. So he can cook Colombian food, too. He was he was one of my, he was at the wedding. Um, so, but I can hold my own for sure. And I love cooking. How's your P.O. box? It's pretty good. Like I said, thank you for the same time, people. Yep, doing my best. Sebastian Manet. Man, it's Calco. I'm sorry. I don't. I might have butchered. That man is hilarious. He's on. He's all over Netflix. Um, he's funny. Italian dude. What are? What he says? Um, aren't you embarrassed? The dude's hilarious. Um, Ryan Regan, one of my good. Um, I, I guess if we go name comedians, uh, Tony Roberts, uh, Patrick Late Great Patrick O'Neill. Uh, uh, man, it's a. I used to like Pablo Francisco. I don't know. I think he just do too much drug now because he be he fell off a lot. But he was pretty funny. Um, oh, Joy Coy, Joe Coy, hilarious. And then the girls. I like some girls too. Um, I forgot her. I guess I don't like them that much. I forgot her name. But uh, something London, London something. She she's she's hilarious. Um, ah. I'm blanking on people. I should have wrote that down. Nikki Glazer, she's all right. Yeah, she cool. I watch it. Dean Cole is hilarious. Yes, my man Dean Cole is funny. So yes, I agree with that one. Yeah, Tony Robbins, you know about that. All right, all right. Uh, San Antonio, would you be down to be friends? Okay, so let me. Um, we I've got about five more minutes. So. People that want to be my friends. Let me tell y'all something. I'm 36 years old. I feel like I'm good with friends. Like, not that I don't want to be your friends. I just can't commit to being a friend friend right now. Like, I have my circle, and it's more like a triangle. It's not even a circle. So, it's like, I don't mind answering to y'all. I don't mind um, interacting with you guys, doing this and that. But I can't commit to being a friend. You know, friend means I'm gonna have to, we're gonna have to talk. We're gonna have to meet up from time to time. I mean, my best friend is Jeanette. It's a girl, my best friend. I barely see her behind. Barely see her. Um, and but we talk every blue moon, and that's my best friend. So like I can't I can't commit to being having new friends right now. Not right now. You just gotta I gotta take take give me some time. We may be friends in the future. Um, yes, people do expect me to be friends. They sent, you know how many numbers I got in my DMs? People actually think I'm about to text or call them. Come on now. I'm not about to do that. No disrespect. You might be a great person and you might be the person I need in my life as a friend, but I'm just going to have to take a, a I'm going to have to take a pause on that just for right now. Um, can we be associates? I guess we could be associates. Um, I'll do my best. What's up? Mom's talking. What's happening? No, we cannot FaceTime. And oh my, London Hughes. Thank you. That's her. She's hilarious. Um, yes, you guys bold as hell calling me on through Instagram. Y'all parents didn't teach y'all no, no manners. Look. Even if my friends want to FaceTime me, they got to text me before to tell me if they're going to FaceTime me. You don't, you just don't FaceTime people like that. So y'all up in here just hitting that video call on IG. Y'all see, IG gave y'all way too much access. Y'all got way too much power. Y'all need to simmer down. I am not about to answer any of them calls. So bring it down a notch. 
Uh, let's see, let's see. <laughs> yes, they are out here shooting shots, but they hit, they they brick it. We already let them know. They they out here. They either not hitting, they not hitting the rim, and it's just airballing, or they clanking that thing because I told them. I already told y'all from the jump. Like y'all, people need to chill. Yeah. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Four more minutes, guys, and then I'm gonna let y'all get back to what y'all have to do. No, I would not go on a bachelor. I already hit that up. Um, they are wilding out here. But I love it, though. Man, I love this energy, man. That's the one thing I like about y'all. I appreciate y'all because y'all are awesome. The energy is great. That's the type of energy I feed off of. The The hyper y'all are, the more the more y'all wild out, the, more I, the better I get. So I love it. I love that energy. I love the positivity. I love it all. So it's, it's great. Um, do I watch anybody else's IG lives? No. The only one I've watched was Ryan's and um, Jose's uh, the other night, and I was on there for a couple minutes. That's the only one I've ever watched. I've never watched a live. So do they have math meet up so you can meet up with? Um, they don't really have maths meet up, but, you know, they talk, and so they meet up. I don't ever meet up. You can ask any of them. I'm not. Uh, I'm not part of that. So I don't I don't meet up with it. I don't meet up with them as a group. I only like I said, I only truly hang out is just with Ryan from time to time. But other than that, I don't hang out with anybody else. So bye. Adios. Hey boo. Um are my friends with other guys? No, not really. I mean, other than what I just said. Um I've been feeling for people that's asking, I'm doing much better. Thank you. Thank you for your concern. I'm doing a lot better. Um, you know, just we got to move forward, right? We can't be stuck in this hole. It's like, see, another thing from therapy. I keep bringing back therapy because that thing is the thing. So one thing she said when I was telling her I was feeling in the rut, the thing she said is like, you're just in a hole right now and you, you need to get out this hole, but you have to create your own ladder to get out this hole. But I'm such in a rush to get out this hole that I keep slipping back in it. So what she said is um, you just have to embrace it. Just lay there for a little bit, get a little rest. It's a hole, nobody there to disturb you. It's your own little pocket. Do what you gotta do, take your time, and then you'll slowly get out. And that's exactly what happened. So me, instead of me trying to rush things, try to get better, because I was trying to force it so much, I just embraced it. I just sat back in it. I let the emotions ride, um, chilled in my hole for a little bit. And then um, next thing you know, a ladder just popped up and I just, glided out that thing you know what i mean so it's it's for sure um like i said therapy is so helpful so i definitely definitely uh would uh, recommend it so i am doing much better thank you thank you thank you thank you two more minutes and we are out y'all so y'all can do your thing and i can go do my thing slow and steady that's right yes yes thank you mom was talking appreciate that thank you thank you Love it. Fun question. Toilet paper roll over or under? Over. Toilet paper goes over. Do not bring that thing under. Even in a patent itself, it goes over. But I'm a wipes person myself or a bidet. So, uh, what you mean pics from Columbia? You was in Columbia with me, Willie. What you mean pics from Columbia? Look at look at your phone. I sent them to you. Bye, Vancouver. My mom is doing great. Thank you for asking, Kathy. What about Michael? Do y'all hang out? Who in the hell is Michael? I don't know, Michael. Um, what are you doing after this? Congrats to the patient. Amazing. Take care. Take care. Bye. 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 Love y'all. Love y'all. Appreciate y'all for coming out. Um, biology. College major is biology. I got my associates in arts and my bachelor's in biology. Um, good night. Good night, good night, good night. Y'all have a good one. No, I do not talk to her anymore. Uh, Y'all have a great night. All right, I'm about to bounce. All right, here we go. I'm gonna do like two more questions and then we out for real. <sighs> oh, you know what? Before I forget, I'm gonna end it off with this. Somebody asked me about my love languages. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk about how I receive them and how I show love. So, uh, and I'll end it off with that. So the way I receive love is through physical touch, 
and acts of services. Like you do something for me, whatever it is, you can sweep the floor and like I'm falling in love, right? That's, I'm very simple when it comes down to that. And then it goes, the last one is words of affirmation. I really don't, mm, it doesn't do nothing to me, but it's nice, right? So it's gonna be physical touch, act of services, uh, quality time, receiving gifts, and words of affirmation. That was, that's the way I receive love. The way I show love is gonna be giving gifts. I'm, I love giving gifts to people that I really care about. Um, physical touch, quality time, words of affirmation, and acts of services. Um, that's the way I give love because, I, I mean, I don't know. That's, when I did the test, that's how it came out. So my top two of receiving love is acts of services and um, physical touch. And my top two of giving love is... Uh, gift giving and physical touch. So that's with that. I say good night to everybody. Hope y'all have a great night. Hope y'all enjoyed it. Thank you for being out. Um, hope I didn't keep y'all for too long and all is good. God is good all the time. All the time. God is good. Bye.